energy mitigation. And in this photo, you see the current, uh, some of the current members. that are already really starting this process of community building. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Uh, we are going to give now the floor to Cecilia. Eh? Yes. If I'm... Cecilia, uh, she has a word. No home without energy. Is it true? This is our problem. It's yes. your, uh, it's it's your uh, way of life, no? <laughs> yeah. Please to explain us. No, no home without energy is our program. It's one of the programs that um, we manage in the Energy and People uh, Department. And is uh, the name of the project explain our objective that is no home without energy and part of this uh, project is uh, energy communities. Please go ahead. So thanks a lot for inviting to explain ECODES program to foster energy communities. Uh, ECODES is an NGO in Spain. And I'm going to reinforce the message that uh, Sara and Miguel uh, have had explained, because more or less our barriers and our uh, learning lessons are the same. Uh, we are aspiring, uh, Miguel said, the, this paradigm, paradigm shift in the energy requires a paradigm shift in citizen participation, because in Spain, only 12% of citizens are associated and only 7% actively participate in tax for the benefits of the community. So, ECODES uh, Energy Community try to promote the participation of citizens in the transition to uh, the new energy model in people's hands, what is important, and leaves no one behind. Our specific objectives are the carbonization of the energy model, empowering people to manage energy, Involving people in energy poverty in the change of the model. Why? Because in 2013, 10 years ago, we started to, to, to develop our No Home Without Energy program, and we realized that energy communities could be a solution for uh, energy poverty. But also, our uh, important in, in Spain, because rural areas don't have population. Uh, we aim also building community at local level, sense of belonging, and of course, promoting distributed energy system. Our work working lines are four. First one is what Miguel explained. We are on the ground. We are as technical experts. We, uh, we boast and support uh, the creation of energy communities in uh, small towns, also in urban areas. Then uh, we try to develop social innovation projects about energy communities to go beyond the frontiers, to know new ideas, to, to test new ideas. The second line is, for us, is very important to uh, create networks to exchange and uh, transfer knowledge to foster energy communities. We want to prevent of each community from inventing the wheel, because sometimes one uh, town, uh, one group of people in the north of Spain is thinking, how can I do my energy community? And this uh, question is also the same question in some place, for example, in the south of Spain. And finally, with all of the learning lessons on the ground and working with people, we try to do advocacy in order to achieve uh, a specific framework for energy community to be a real player in the energy market and also to have ambitious law that put energy, energy communities in the, in the center. What is an energy community? Sarah has explained. And uh, is about self-consumption or not? Well, what are the difference between uh, energy solar co collective self-consumption and energy communities? For us, uh, the, the title of the session is self-consumption, but there are different, very important differences. First one is 
Energy Solar Collective Cell Consumption is about uh, kilowatts. It has to do with a technical intervention and with energy. And it's a modality of cell consumption, the Spanish regulation. But energy communities is something uh, about people. It's uh, how people organize themselves, people, administration, local authorities, and SMEs, how they can organize themselves to carry out common project, not, not only in renewable energy or solar energy, also uh, in projects like uh, building renovation or electric car sailing. And it's a legal entity. For us, uh, it's an opportunity for towns to lead the change of energy model and also to create a space of, for dialogue around the natural resources to who we have in our environment to produce energy. And how to create an energy community? Uh, we develop this roadmap. With this roadmap, we help a small towns and group of citizens that we want to create an um, energy community. Uh, Miguel has explained in detail most of the steps that we, we follow. The first one is uh, related, in, in that case, is true that many times the first uh, project that an uh, energy community thinks is cell consumption because it's the easiest and the most known. So, at the beginning, we try to uh, analyze the PV potential of the most suitable uh, roofs and land for a collective cell consumption in order to know how many people can participate in the energy community. Then it's crucial, the informative and participatory processes. It's very important to, to develop a communication uh, campaign in order to encourage people to participate in the, in the com energy community to create a driving group of people that they spread the world among their neighbors, their friends, and they act as dynamizers. Then when we have people, we have to collect the, the data because it's very important to invite all of uh, interested people to participate in the co-creation workshops in order to define what uh, Miguel said, the, the legal statutes, internal regulation, funding, constitution of EC, and when these things are clear, the internal regulation and so on, we are already an energy community. It's important to define together the economic model, definition of the funding of the energy community, how, um, how many the members are going to invest. Of course, if the, municip if the roof are from the municipality, some, someone explained, it's very important uh, to develop how the municipal is going to allow to the energy community use their spaces. And at the end, we implement the photovoltaic installation. So only speak about technical issues at the end of the processes, at the end of the roadmap. It's very important that roadmap for creating an energy community is something related to people. Uh, thanks of this roadmap, we, we help to create 12 energy communities in the north of Spain in 2020. And it's very important that uh, pioneers lead the energy transition. You can see uh, uh, in the north of Spain, in the Pyrenees, start uh, our first energy community. And then uh, it saw the seed uh, to create a contagion effect in the energy towns. And now, the energy communities movement is going down for the, our region, so this is very, very important. And also we develop social innovation projects to test new alternatives, a pilot projects to see if energy communities can solve this kind of, pro, uh, of problems or challenges, take energy poverty, foster rural development, boost citizen participation, and also promote green jobs. One example is Barrio Solar. It's an urban solar community. It consists in of two collective cell consumption installations locate, located in uh, two sport facilities from the municipality. It was difficult to get the permission to put the installation there, one of the barriers that uh, Sarah mentioned. And uh, 200 household and business participate by cell consumption solar energy. To, uh, 20 are vulnerable household and they participate for free because the rest of the people assume the part of the money that this vulnerable household should uh, put. 
Ecodesk is the coordinator and uh, we collaborate with a power company, GP, and the Zaragoza City, City Council also participate. Um, and now we are starting a new project is called La Energía del Barrio. In this case, uh, we wanted to involve vulnerable families in a disadvantaged neighborhood in the change of energy model through the creation of an energy community, but also a learning community. Miguel has uh, told about energy literacy, that is very important. Energy communities uh, is an opportunity also to increase this energy literacy from the people. So this project has uh, three main activities. One of them is collective self-consumption, an installation of a solar installation in a church. That is quite different because church is the center of the social activity in this disadvantaged neighborhood. Uh, 60 vulnerable families are going to participate in the self-consumption, but a part of the installation, we are going to develop a support and learning processes. D during one year, we are going to train vulnerable people in order to learn how uh, to improve their energy consumption habits, uh, how they can manage with their energy bills, uh, how can they go to uh, ask for their uh, energy rights from the energy companies. And at the, at the end, the last, the last activity is an energy office. It's an energy office open to all of the neighborhoods, not only the families that participate in the self-consumption, because for us it's very important that the energy literacy spread around the neighborhood promote self-consumption, individual, other energy, in the or other energy communities in the, in the neighborhood, and also uh, electric car saving project or building renovation together. Thanks a lot. Oh. So what a new world. Energy communities, new producers.